A few months ago, I went outside to check the mail. I have one of those really old mailboxes that is right outside the house. I leafed through the mail. It was all bills and flyers and magazines. Then I noticed something else at the bottom of the mailbox. A videotape. Now, sometimes I find things in the mailbox like bugs, garbage, and things like that. A few years back we had found a squirrel and made a mess there. But a videotape. I picked it up and looked at it. It looked like a normal videotape. I looked at the side. There was a shiny sticker of a butterfly on it. I peeked into the mailbox, hoping to find some explanation for the videotape, but I found nothing else. I walked inside and set up my VCR, which had been collected just by then. I inserted the tape in and waited until it was finished rewinding. When it was finished, I pressed play on my remote. It was 10.30 at night, and I grabbed some popcorn and a soda and plopped myself onto the sofa. I was ready to watch this mysterious tape. The video started with one of those WMED events. I had last seen that event when I was maybe six or seven. What followed was an advert to the theme park Marineland, the old advert from the 1990s. During that advert, the screen kept flashing. I couldn't make out what was flashing because it only lasted for a quarter of a second. The Marineland ad was cut off and it went to pitch black. I was about to rewind to see what was flashing when a familiar thing came up. It was PBS Kids. There was a brief advert for Chuck E. Cheese. I smiled as I watched my childhood return to me. Suddenly, it faded to what show was coming up next. Coming up next. Dragon Tales. On PBS Kids. I'm sure most of you know the show Dragon Tales. It's better that you've at least seen five episodes of the show before you understand any of this. The intro of the show started. Everything was right, except there was no sound. It cut off in the middle of the intro and cut to a picture of Max sitting on a chair with the words, Dragon Tales, crudely written above him in red. The thing that frightened me the most was Max's facial expression. He was pale and his eyes were tiny. He sat there if he was trying to smile, but he needed to cry. Almost like the expression of a man about to hang himself. The episode started. It showed an outside view of Max and Emmy's house as it always does. The sky was a dark red, and the sun was an orangish color. Max walked in holding his elbow. Oh, he exclaimed. I bumped me elbow on the table. Emmy stood at him. She had a frown on her face. Maybe if you'd fuck me then your elbow wouldn't hurt so much, she replied. I was shocked at what I had just heard. She had said what I thought she had just said. More significantly, there was no credits or episode title. Then Max said, Emmy, Mommy told us to not say that word. Emmy took a deep breath. Before she could speak, Max screamed. Don't do it, Emmy, he cried. I don't want to live through this anymore. Do what? I wondered. What was Emmy going to do? I was starting to get scared at this point, and I knew I was not watching a normal episode of Dragon Tales. They continued their conversation. The rest was nearly audible. Finally, Emmy suggested in a clear voice, Why don't we go to Dragonland? The dragon wallpaper was black and bright red. The dragons on the wall had gigantic smiles on their face. They held each other hand in hand and chanted, I wish I wish with all my heart to fly with dragons in a land apart. After they arrived in Dragonland, they looked for their friends. They found Ord sitting behind the rock. Max approached him. Hey, Ord, wanna play with my new truck? He asked. Ord turned around. I could hear bits of radio static. At first I couldn't hear what the voices were saying, but I began to hear what the man on the radio was saying. What I heard was, Well, Jim, this is a terrible situation we have here. Police have confirmed the plane carrying President Barack Obama was hijacked by a few members of Al-Qaeda. The plane crashed into the Statue of Liberty in New York City, the city where Obama was supposed to appear. We are unsure who else was on that plane or if there were any casualties. I don't know anything else, but all I can tell you is the Statue of Liberty is in flames and the plane was carrying President Barack Obama. During the time the radio was playing, Ward was sitting behind the rock. He had no expression on his face. He was just sitting there still. He wasn't dead, but his face almost looked like it. I thought back to Max's expression on the chair. 
Once the storm came in, Horde walked away. He walked expressionism, he walked in a straight line around Dragonland. The sky was blood red. Horde then gave a slick smile. A gigantic scream erupted out of nowhere. It cut to a zoom in of a photorealistic image of Horde in a bony like state, lying dead with his eyes torn out of a message carved out of his head. In Horde's blood it said, Hail Satan. It cut to black at that second. It then faded into a church. The bell rang in a distorted, deep tone. The sky was still blood red. The radio static came back. Breaking news, the anchorman proclaimed, President Barack Obama is dead. He was killed this afternoon in a plane crash along with Vice President Joe Biden and 55 other government officials. Also on that plane was rock and roll legend Chuck Berry and 40 other people. The plane was hijacked by five Al-Qaeda members whose names have not been confirmed yet. The anchorman's voice shook with terror as he spoke. This is a terrible, shocking day for not only the United States of America, but for the entire world. The response was... After that, it went to static. It showed paintings of the inside of the church. At that moment, I assumed this had something to do with the death of Obama. It zoomed in on the coffin. It was photorealistic. The voice of Zack suddenly shouted, Cassie, no! It cut to a black and white video. It was silent, except for random beeping noises. And by silent, all you could hear was a film projector running. It showed Cassie walking around in a white background. She just kept walking. The beeping sounds got louder. Cassie stopped. She walked over towards the screen. I could hear her breathing. Her eyes were bloodshot. Her teeth were broken. Her hair was shaved off. At this point, I thought Cassie could hear me. Cassie opened her mouth. What followed was the most ear-piercing, loudest sound that I have ever heard in my life. It wasn't like a scream, but a really messed up deep in sound that was louder than any human could hear. My ears sometimes still ring from that, that is how bad it was. In fact, I'm lucky I am not deaf. Cassie continued to stare at me. I was getting scared at this moment, and I didn't want to watch anymore. I tried to shut it off. <laughs> said Cassie, in the voice of a crying and choking woman, we must pray to Satan. Then it faded to black. It faded back to a dragon pin. For those that don't know, the format was two ten minute episodes, and the song in between. I hoped that the nightmare had ended. It hadn't. The song was an organ track that was being looped. The video quality wasn't very good, so I couldn't see what was really going on. There were about 500 dragons in a gigantic circle chanting, Cassie, Cassie, Cassie. Cassie then smiles and jumps into the fire. The video quality suddenly improves. It shows Cassie's flesh burning. She looked at me and proclaimed, You did this to me, before her skin was burnt to ashes and her entire body turned terrible. It actually showed her being burnt. Suddenly, hundreds of dragons pounced on her remains. They began to scratch at each other. They were devouring each other. It showed dragons biting into each other's skulls, dragons ripping off the flesh of other dragons, and fleshless dragons crying blood. I began to wonder how this was a dragon pin. The scene changed back to Max and Emmy back at their house. I need my truck, exclaimed Max. Well hurry up, said Emmy in an angry voice. Max then fell in the toy box he was searching. Emmy, Emmy, I'm locked. Help me. Max screamed. He was crying. Like, actually real crying. Emmy screamed. It's stuck. You could feel the pain as Max panicked to get out. To make a long story short, he didn't. It cut to a gigantic cage. It showed Zack and Weezy on all fours, drinking water from a dish. They began to sing. The singing was muffled, so I couldn't understand the words. After a while, the song became more clear and the voices of Zack and Weezy now sounded like an old man with a gruff voice and a little girl no older than four. The last verse went something like this, Praise thy devil, for he is thou. Let him possess unto thou. For pain and torture are all we can see. It's better you than him and me. Then they paused. The little girl started to cry. It was actual crying, not acting. Stand up, the man says in a gruff voice. I said stand the fuck up so I can rape you again, the man shouted. You could actually hear the man rape the little girl. You could feel her pain as she was being forced to do something illegal. Her screams and cries echoed. 
Finally, the screams of Christ stopped. Stand up, you filthy piece of shit, the man yelled. I want my mommy, the girl cried. She was screaming. Out of the blue, a loud gun should break out. The girl continued to scream loudly. Five shots were fired. You could hear the whispering of the old man's voice. Oh shit, what am I going to do with the body? The video cut to a surveillance camera room. The videos playing were videos of different angles of a plane crashing into the Statue of Liberty. I began to wonder how the girl's rape and murder and the terrorism act both connected together. It cut to pitch black. Suddenly, a face came out from the shadows. It was a terrifying figure from one of my worst nightmares when I was five. He looked like Satan, his eyes were bulging out, and he had a big smile on his face. He opened his mouth and let out that ear piercing sound I had heard earlier. I was able to stop the video now. I didn't want to see the face of that terrible demon anymore. I shut off the VCR and stayed up all night on my computer. I threw out the videotape, but after I took some photos of the episode. Before garbage day, I made sure the video was in the garbage. It wasn't. I searched the house and it was nowhere to be seen. I never have seen the tape again, and I warn you to never pick up mysterious videotapes you find.